Um, got it. So I was saying that in the short term, it's if you design experience for the short term, yeah, it was kind of disappointing. But for the long term, I'm more encouraged than ever that yes, you can have the bigger vision. And yes, I see more operational feasibility of it. But so, so now that's more experience over the last decade, including heavy learnings this year. Um, on that, how do you operationalize it? <clears throat> the resources, the time, skill, limits, blocks, uh, culture that's required. So yeah, working on it is, um, the point is, um, what's the point of it? There is, there is a rigorous process for doing this and that's what we're working on and all of that for how do you, well, for transformation, there's a, that's a ri very rigorous thing. It's not a, it's not this lighthearted new age thing. It's a very rigorous thing. Uh, but I think it's, it's scalable and all of that. Um, but we were talking about last last thing was Kristen Dirksen. Um, people get little insights to get introduced to to all the things, and that's cool. And that was my immediate. That actually was my learning about around the year 2000, because I actually started running workshops at University of Wisconsin Madison, practical workshops here: build a solar dehydrator, a bicycle powered uh, electrical bi electrical bicycle assist, power assist, uh, things like that, duck raising workshop. But the thing I noticed there was, that was like some of the earlier learnings. It's like, oh yeah, great. But what we need is to, because uh, the thing I noticed right there was, that's awesome. But then there's Monday and what do people do? They go back to their crap jobs. It's like, man, what a disconnect. I saw it. And that's when I started open source ecology was, was part of the motivation. One was the lack of collaboration. The other one was you got to do this for a living. You got to create a new operating system where people plug into a different thing. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. But operations, man. So I, I, know we, I think we're getting to, okay, let's talk about operations for the builder crash course, which is definitely on track part of it. It, it helps us get the, a lot of the documentation that's required for this house. Um, the good thing about it is the same kind of ergonomics of efficiency. We'll be reproducing that with 24 skilled people for even faster build time. So there's, there's that thing that people will get to see it in two weeks, including education, but then there's even a faster, more organized version that we got to script it like an opera, you know? Yeah. Cause it, it's like that with a digital model which is so-called building 2.0. If you look at that on our wiki, what is building 2.0? It's when you take building digital. Um, but that's the kind of context we operate in. Uh, housing, let me see, housing 2.0. There's a good presentation on that by some other dudes, but we, we do like all of that and then some. Uh, if you, so here's a link to that for the framework of how this extreme manufacturing of ours like when I saw this presentation, I was like, oh, cool. We're doing all of this. Cool, cool, cool. And then we have some, probably some steps <clears throat> on top of what they say. Yeah. I, like the integration, like the integrating the trades and all of that, like the total integration. Okay. But anyway, uh, look, look at that video there or that presentation. If you get a chance, because this is like what we're doing and we're, we're doing it right now. They're saying, this is the next thing. Um, well, we're doing it, like, say, in our workshops and in our theory, but in practice, doing it means that we build hundreds and thousands of houses using these techniques uh, as we distribute the economy, uh, as a distributive enterprise. Yeah, okay, but anyway, operations. You, you, you don't want me to comment at all on that? We just go straight back. No, you, no, 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 please do. Please do. Uh, I, I just wanted to uh, let you know that I have – a relationship that I haven't ruined yet with Matt Reisinger and I saw that. Yeah. 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 So, um, I, I don't know where I am in the queue for their, like they've got a podcast called the unbuilded podcast. Matt has already told me he wants to help me promote whatever I'm doing. This was a long time ago, but I haven't, I haven't reached out to him yet. So, um, sorry. Do, so do you know him personally? You met him or uh, over the phone? Okay. Um, so, so the bottom line is like that, that's, that's another resource potentially super valuable that we could tap into down the road. Um, I just want to Absolutely. throw it out there. 
no absolutely like once we got our materials and we've got our promo video where now it's like this is going to be different like uh do you have any comments on my apprenticeship video from last time because i kind of try to get into like man this is it we're going to do it well i've got the next iteration of that <laughs> so, uh, I, well, I mean like not me, written yet but yeah let me let me go rewatch it i think generally speaking like it was it was exactly what you needed to talk to the like the people who are who are on your website already i think it's a different yeah. animal to bring new people to your world well yeah because we found that the client that that is actually going to do this is a different client it's not there the open source idealist yeah there you go it is not holy shit uh and you kind of showed it uh well you've got the audience of people who we think are the right profile potentially yeah potentially and and we're, we're searching we keep searching but it's a different thing it's it's going to be present it has to be presented in a different way it's, uh, and i think the bottom line of it is, is is this is like this is serious right can be a <clears throat> uh an idealistic pencil neck to do this this is different <clears throat> than that well that, that that to me is the appeal to the veteran community it's like we don't give a shit about your like degree or what you did in the army, like in terms of your actual MOS, like we care about the fact that you're willing to get in the trenches and work your ass off and learn, and you care about changing the world. Right. Um, yeah. Okay. So, it, all right. Operations. I'm going to have to hop off in like 18 minutes. Um, all right. So we need to save some time to chat about next week so I can buy my flights. Um, so November, December, we talked about curriculum development. Do you, do you want to just go through this Gantt chart together or is there something specific? Yeah, yeah no, let's do it. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, send me a link in the chat box again. Because I looked up Builder Crash Course on the wiki and it's not there. Yeah, it, while I'm <laughs> while I'm uh, in Missouri, I'm gonna need help. I'm gonna need your help showing me how to engage with wiki. Oh yeah, I thought you'd never ask. Hey, look if if I could if I could transplant your brain into my head, I would. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, and that's the latter <laughs> levels of. Um, development that will probably happen in sh soon as we clone people right but my not without collaboration the matrix is broken yeah okay so <clears throat> yeah okay go ahead man go ahead all right so so i think we're at the in terms of planning stage curriculum development um i think the first thing we need to do is figure out what's the minimum curriculum you need to, to run this minimum level of detail is it an is it a oh, hourly schedule sharing. yeah oh yeah yeah you yeah it would be i mean the curriculum is going to be hour by hour this is the day scripted and that way we allow for tight product fit you know here's an evaluation it's like okay here's what you get and people are clear and stuff like that because part of it with it's like we have very uncertain schedules like you know for example like first of all how many people are going to show up because uh, how many people are going to show up is how much we'll build we have to address all of that like hey if um we get 24 people like what happens when we get 12 people do we cancel the event you know things like that are we shooting for okay 24 and then we're just going to roll with that because the outcome can depend on it or we can design it that the outcome is independent that means we do as much as we can we have a lot of stuff prepared already which right now we do we literally have this whole house shall done and we could you know even if less people showed up we could still do it so so would you would, would you want each day you've got a grid where you've got each of the 24 people on the rows and then the columns are the tasks that they're doing that day or the or the that times the and then the tasks groups it would really be groups because for yeah yeah it would be um I would say it would be teams of six or so um, for each. I would break it down by each guide. So each 
assistant instructor. So okay. everyone's learning a topic probably. And how far away are we from having uh, group tasks or group organizations? Like in your well, head I mean, conceptually. Yeah, like, I mean, sitting down on it for like a solid day or two would yield it. I mean, here it's basically like um, in the actual build and that now, now this gets into, okay, are we covering, what more are we covering than the actual build? Are we also saving a bunch of time for, okay, here's about building, here's about codes, here's about solving housing, like maybe save like a day or two for that. But for the actual build, that'll be represented by uh, I can show you this. If there's like a visual um, under build instructions, there's a visual diagram. Uh, let's see. Yeah, build sequence. Okay, so it's a fabrication diagram. Let me show you this thing. Take a look at that. And that <clears throat> attach names to all those. Uh, allow me to, let's see, am I allowed to share the screen? Yeah. Take a look at that. That's fabrication diagram. But that thing right there, it's like, yeah, that's what we're doing. Okay, perfect. That's great. I mean, that, that just means that we have less work to do from an operations standpoint. Yeah, we actually have pretty much like we have procedures for everything. A lot of a lot of things. There's like a bunch of working docs we had throughout the whole summer. Like here's we cover the stairs. Here's we cover the roof and stuff like that. it's all over the place. So a lot of it is there, but a lot of it because we found that we we're still prototyping, uh, it's going to change details. Some details can change and stuff like that. Like right now, we, I mean, we changed the actual panel design after we found that this is just too hard. That was the learning. It was just too hard for people to do it. Yeah. We thought we simplified it from last time, but it didn't work. And so we went to the like third major revision of here's how you actually build a panel. And it's like a, like a DIY structural insulated panel concept right now. Away if, if you can connect to it, I can explain it to you. Like when you come here, maybe I'll show you that, but basically like we have a rail that you have lips or tabs on the panel itself. So you locate it on a sill plate and then a top plate goes on top of it in a particular location right so and then i slip mm. into each other <clears throat> okay so so it's it's really about organizing the information that already exists for the most part it's like yeah. maybe 10 percent refinement but okay we all accept that that's the tr that's the problem it's that one percent that the last one percent of the that 10 percent that is going to take 99 percent of the time if you're going to do the nice product for a minimum viable, viable product yeah, it will be like maybe, yeah, now that I think about it, it's like 10%, but it's not going to be that workshop that scales throughout the world. No, I get it. So to I actually it. do it, yeah, yeah, iteration. I guess, I guess you're talking iteration. But yeah. but it, I'm actually thinking in terms of the priority for your time when you're not on the job site, right, or uh, finishing up Winter X, right? So like you said, if I lock myself in a room for a couple of days, I can gather all of the raw data and organize it to a 75% solution, right? Yeah. Yeah. So like all I'm trying to get at here, this is operations. And I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to best prioritize your time today until the next time we meet. Yeah. Except, you know, I've got winter X <clears throat> and on, on, on the ground, what's happening there. I'm building the bathroom and, and the exterior siding on a, on a CD go home too. So there's a little bit of that. That's, yeah, that's happening. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I mean, to me, all, all, all that points to is uh, like you, you don't start in earnest for until winter X is done in terms of the curriculum development. December three. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. I mean, I, I think, I think that's, that's perfectly realistic. I just wanted to reflect, like, I don't want to throw a bunch of stuff up on the Gantt chart for the sake of just covering our bases. Like, I want to actually help you prioritize your time. Exactly. Right. So, yeah, so that... I just moved that box to the right, which is fine. Um, okay. So in terms of like promo video production announcement teaser, you know, 
thoughts on that? How far away are you from being able to dedicate any sort of time on that? Man, when I can, I'm in the background, it's brewing, but to actually do it. Cool. I'll probably like when I get full time in December. Okay. Um, support team budget estimate. You know, as I'm looking at the rest of this, I, I think we're noticing a trend here, right? Like you and I need to sit down next Wednesday and start planning and prioritizing the time for when winter X ends. Right. Because the staff requirement, instructor roles and responsibilities, like a lot of this will come out of curriculum dev um, yeah. Same thing with logistics. So, so a lot of these need to come out of the outputs of that process. Um, support team. I mean, the the support team recruiting thing probably needs to be oh. a part of like further down the road, like after the the teaser. Yeah. Now, budget estimate, though, that's something that I think you've already you've already started on the other slides. I think I can help you refine that, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you already have yeah. a spreadsheet model? N not really. Just just uh, just quick quick notes on page three. Well, maybe I can start working on that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And put yourself in as the ops manager and think about it as this is the f first one we do. We replicate it. We replicate yeah. it again. Um, and, and my mind immediately goes to, okay, how do we can and clone it as in, no, we're actually teaching people to do this. That's one of the products we offer, but that's down the road. All right. So this is November 10th. To do list. John, start financial model. I think this will be important too because once we develop a better model financially, we can start thinking in terms of like the menu of financing options down the road once it scales into like a bigger education and employment pathway. Well, that'll be one of the products of a, of a micro factory little facility. So whatever that facility is, it's a hacker space, it's a farm, it's a OSC campus thing, but that's, that'll be like one of its offerings. It's like, yeah, that's, it's a great, it's, it's a very substantial thing. It's like how to build a house. It's big and it can happen in um, like a 3000 square foot of workshop. Right. Okay. And Actually, I'm going to put this in here because I think it's important to uh, March. I think you need to give your permission. Even winter X. Yeah, give yourself permission to forget about this stuff when you're doing winter X. Sorry. No, I'm too excited about it. Uh, let me tell you about my psychology that I discovered the other day. So this is this is <laughs> weird shit. So in a PhD minutes. program, in a PhD program, I always got kicked out because I was doing more regenerative sustainability studies than than my PhD studies. So I had to focus and pass the prelim, super focus, hyper focus. Um, yes, the other day I I couldn't sleep because uh, I went to bed too late or whatever, or ate too late. And what I do is. Uh, for the public record is if I can't sleep, I would stew on it. But then, but then I just go to the kitchen, get something to eat, and that kind of knocks you out, right? Well, I decided not to do that. I'm going to say I'm going to beat this because there's I'm going to actually keep thinking until I fall asleep. I, I would say it works for me, but it requires that discipline that says I am absolutely committed to this. So I'm going to take that psychological discomfort of like going through things and solving things. And if I do it right, I actually get in a flow and then fall asleep. So that's, that's my insight. That's why I'm not, <clears throat> sleep comes when it does. But uh, no, I get plenty of sleep. Don't worry about it. Okay, next. Well, re re replace sleep with, uh, I don't know, take, take care of yourself a little bit. Um, okay, so, so assuming I arrive Tuesday, get my own car, and then fly out 
Thursday, Friday. Um, are we thinking Friday makes more sense? Like, is the time on the ground useful to you? Yeah, I think to. Uh, I think so. I think okay. so. I mean, I, I I think. I mean, we can spend a lot of time on actually like delving into this and actually doing doing stuff. I think. Okay. And then you, you know, I can show you stuff like, okay, here's well, one a tour, but then actually, like, maybe build, actually build one module. It takes an hour, takes an hour, okay. or half an hour. Like, we should do that. So you see, yeah, you see that part. And should I bring my reality. tool bags? Yeah. Okay. If um, it's if it's not a if it's not a, you don't really need it. But I mean, if it's not a big deal to slip it in your luggage, but if you got free okay. luggage, um, we got tools. If I get a car. Uh, do you, is there any errands or anything you want me to do on my way up there? Like stop at Costco or something and get, no, a, no. no, but maybe, Think I don't know, it. like if we're going to have an, in, yeah, if we have an intense working time, like, um, find out the exact times that are best for you and I'll, I'll let you know if I should pick you up or you should get, okay. get a car. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then uh, do you have any like dietary or should you, do you drink alcohol? Do you have any dietary restrictions or anything? No, no dietary restrictions. Okay, cool. I'll, I'll grab some groceries since I'm going to be another mouth to feed. Unless you don't want me to. I think you, you could. <clears throat> cause, cause there's, there's four of us in the Hab Lab. Um, Katrina and I are in the Sidiga home. But um, yeah, we'll have to set you up in the Hab Lab. We got plenty of rooms there. Okay. Uh, should I bring like a sleeping bag? No, I think I think we're set. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, I'm excited. I'll look at some flights and get back to you. So just to knock off the thing of who's who's visiting was it uh what's his name uh Tracy yeah his name is Tracy so, I mean so stuff like I mean the place look is a mess we're under construction permanently like how much effort do we have to put into cleaning like now I just moved like all these solar panels all the boxing is all over the place like it's in the driveway to the workshop like um how much do we have to clean stuff and, and like think about anything making this place presentable? I, I actually don't know the answer to that, man. I, I think I wouldn't, I wouldn't drive yourself crazy, but I would, I would try and make it look like a, a safe functioning workshop, you know? Yeah. Um, I think, yeah. I think that's, if you can convey that, like, this is a, this is a safe place for strangers to show up. Yeah. Um, I mean, he, he may show up and be like, oh, you guys are way far away from what we're looking for. And it may be a short visit, but at the very least, we'll get some some good data on the back end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think the most important thing is showcasing what you've already done. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's an easy answer to that. We, we started the good parts before we yeah. take them to the Coliseum. Right. <laughs> Feed them to the lions. Yeah. Um okay, I gotta hop off. Um Okay. Always good seeing you and I'll be in touch with uh details. Okay. Thanks. Take okay. care. Send me the videos, yep. Mm-hmm.